All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, before I get started, as always, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashim Al Shai or Chakadash, which Yahweh, that's the Heavenly Father's true name, Yahweh Shai, that's whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, that's his true name, and Chakadash, that is the Holy Spirit. And I also want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well in the scriptures. And salutations to all the brothers out there pushing this word and in all truth and in all sincerity. All right. And today I want to get into a lesson on how you got to remember that this truth for the majority of the time is going to be bitter. You see? And, you know, you got to uh, 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 keep that in mind because I'll say this when you first. Come into this truth, okay? You know, when you first start reading the scriptures, you know, things are, you know, sweet, as the scriptures talk about, which we'll get in a moment, all right? They're like honey. You know, you, you, you learn, learn that you're an Israelite, that you're a, the most high, you know, the most high's chosen people, that you're above all nations, that eventually you're going to be the, you know, that ruler, that king. You're going to have slaves. You're going to have multiple wives. Okay? You know, all these things are going to be in your hands soon. Right? But then that bitter part, you know, comes. Where you have to endure. You have to resist temptation. You know? Afflictions arise. Such as you losing, okay? You know, your, uh, your wife. Okay. You you know you losing your business, you not um you losing a job, you not ha having money. Okay? Your parents start looking at you sideways because you're not celebrating, you know, holidays. You don't eat particular foods. Okay? So on and so forth. Whatever it is. That's the bitter part. And it's a lot. It's a lot. Okay? And you see, what happens with a lot of uh, individuals out there, they don't count the cost and they don't expect these things to come like that, right? And what happens is when these things arise and, they, you know, it actually hits them, they become offended. And when they become offended, what happens is they drop the plow. You know, they, they, they have an excuse now to not continue this work. Remember, you as an individual have to uh, endure to the end. Because I'll say this, side note, you have made a vow with the Heavenly Father and His Son, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, by coming into this truth. Remember that. And you, you got to finish a, that vow. Okay? And if you don't, you're going to get punished severely. Remember, you, you can't just walk away from this. And think everything's going to be A-OK. -okay. No. You can't do that. You cannot do that. Alright? But let's uh, start off with this. This is uh, Revelation 10 and 8. And the voice which I heard from the heaven, from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book, which the little book that represents the scriptures, the Bible, okay? Which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went... Unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy uh, belly bitter, and it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. You see, this. You know, once you start eating the, the scriptures, okay, it's sweet. Like I said, you learn that you're, you know, uh, uh, not a, a, a low nation. That you're the best nation, actually. That the Most High is going to save you. That you're going to be a king. You're going to be a, a judge, a ruler. You're going to have, you know, uh, all these wives, all these children, lands, etc., right? That's the, the sweet part. But that bitter, they, those are the hardships, the afflictions, the trials, the tribulations. You see the temptations. That's the bitter part. And it doesn't feel good. Okay? 
These things don't feel good. Hey, when, when, when you're, you know, with the woman, let's just say 10 years, and she, you know, decides to leave and take your kids, that, that's not going to feel good. Okay? You know, you, let's just say you had a great relationship with your parents right before the truth, and now they don't want to talk to you or you're always getting into arguments because of the scriptures. That's not going to feel good. Okay? You know, you always, you know, not having money when you're used to having money. That's not going to feel good. You getting rebuked, reproved, okay? And you're always used to being um, the guy that was always right. That's not going to feel good. All right? You see? But look, we cannot get offended by these things. We got to keep pushing and keep trucking. No matter what comes our way. You see? Now let me keep reading. Because look, we have a job. And the 11th verse is going to get into it. This is our job right here. This is Revelation 10 and 11. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. And see, this is what um, the angel was telling the, uh, uh, was it, uh, John the Revelator, okay? Which was one of the uh, disciples later turned apostle, okay, of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, whom that's whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, okay? They, the, the angel was basically saying, look, you're going to, after you die in this life, you're going to be reincarnated. And you're going to have to prophesy again. You're going to have to prophesy, okay, before many people, before nations, tongues, and kings. That, hey, that's a prophet's job, man. To, 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 to push forth the word of the Heavenly Father and the Son. To let the people know what's going to happen in that current kingdom. And what's to come afterwards. And to ultimately gather... Uh, uh, um, Gather the lost sheep of the house of Israel through the word. And the lost sheep uh, uh, is uh, the house of Israel, which they, is, the Israelites consist of you so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans. And also, side note, all right, a little side note here. We got some of our people looking like other nations. And that's because our men of the nation of Israel mix with the heathens, okay? Which, when they are men mixed with the heathens, okay? Our children, our seed line started looking like the uh, other nations. Okay. The well, point being though is we're supposed to teach the uh, the uh, um, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay. To, you know, uh, uh, to, uh, to teach our people. All right. So they know, you know, what's evil, what's good, what's holy, what's profane. All right. That's our main job. But we also, hey, we got to tell... Oh, these uh, uh, nations that they're going to fall. That there's a judgment for their behavior. Okay. And, and, and with that being said. Their judgment is coming forth. And it's going to play out in the future. And you see. People don't want to hear these things. Okay. They don't. Because well, what's going to happen. You know. What's going to arise is what? Persecution. Okay. Afflictions to us. That's what's coming. That's what's happening. I'll say, you know, scratch it. That's what's happening. It's just on a, a, a low uh, a level right now. But it's going to intensify as we keep, keep getting closer to the end. You see? The point being, though, is this truth is bitter. It's not It's not fun. Look, this is what the scriptures say in the, the book of Ezekiel. Okay? This is, oh, is it the third? Oh, I think it's the second chapter. Yep, this is... Uh, Man, you know what? We're starting from the top. Okay, this is uh, Ezekiel two and one, and he said unto me, "Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee." And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and spake, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, "Son of man, I send thee." To the ch children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. And that's our people. A bunch of hard head, you know, a bunch of hard headed people, stiff neck, a bunch of knuckleheads, basically. Okay? Bunch of uh, 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 know it alls. And just, 
you know, a bunch of sinners, man, that don't want to get right. But we, we got to remember, there are some out there that are looking for answers. They're lost. They don't know what's going on, but they know something is off. And they're trying to, to, to get guided back into the right direction. You see? And we, the men of the Lord, are those shepherds that were uh, uh, sent forth to, to, to gather the, uh, the, the lost sheep, man. Okay? But, hey, back to, to, to whom? The chief shepherd, which is Yahweh Shai. All right, well, let's keep going. Verse, uh, uh, was it verse three? Oh no, verse four. For their impudent children and stiff-hearted, I do send thee unto them. See, the Lord set us up to go out there. All right, and it says, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, and they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, meaning whether they listen or not, for they are a rebellious house. Yet shall know that yet they shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And eventually, you know, at, so, at at some point, these, you know, knuckleheads, these hard headed, you know, Israelites, they're gonna realize that these men that were out there on the corners, you know, in the streets. You know, with, with, you know, with Bibles in their hands, with big beards. These men were on point. Hey, their cousin that was trying to teach them about, you know, being an Israelite was on point. Their dad, their mom, whoever, right? They're, they're, they're going to realize, all right, hey, D, 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 hey. You know, hold on, let me scratch that because I, I, I said mom. Hey, you know, because really the only, the only prophets are men. All right, but point being, hey. Hey, their cousin, their dad, their brother, all right, etc., right? You know, their nephew, those that were trying to teach them that they were Israelite, okay? They're going to realize, you know what? They were on point. They were right. See, our people are going to realize these things when all hell break loose, all right? That's when they're going to, you know, understand these things. Well, let me keep reading. Verse 6, and thou son of man, be not afraid of them. Neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou doest dwell among scorpions. You see, don't be afraid of them, because look, hey, there's times where you're going to be threatened. Best believe that. Whether it be, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, an actual uh, physical altercation, you know, might arise, or whether it just be threats with words. Don't be afraid of them, okay? Be not... Afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. Be thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein meaning the scriptures and he said it he spread it before me and it was written with within and without and there was written therein lamentations and mournings and woes so that's what's in the scriptures lamentations mornings and woes you know pretty much meaning things aren't going to be good for the most part now they're a they're a the course in the scriptures there's good you know there's parts where it's you know joyous Happy, you know, happiness is, you know, in it, tranquility, peace, etc. But that's later down, you know, the line. That's at the end of the movie. We're still in the part of the movie where we're dealing with, you know, trials, tribulations, and woes. You know, lamentations, mournings, woes. The hardships. Ultimately, that, that, that spiritual fire, man. That's where we're at right now. Okay? And you got to remember that. Because look. Like I, I, may, I mentioned earlier, you did make if if you call yourself an Israelite, all right, yeah, you, you 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 know you start following the law, statutes, and commandments. You you start studying, you start preaching. You made a vow. You made a vow unto Yahweh Bashem Al Shai that this is the truth and that you're gonna follow the Lamb wheresoever He goeth, no matter what you know what comes your way, right? Because look, what does it say here in Baruch, uh, or not Baruch, Sirach, the second chapter? 
it says, Sirach 2 and 1, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So look, temptations are going to come your way. Hey, look, that 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 that, that chick, all right? You know, that chick with that, that, that nice round, you know, behind, all right? Them big, luscious, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that big, luscious chest, right? Hey, she might come, you know, come to you, start flirting with you. She might want to give you, you know, uh, her number. She was, she wants you to go back to her place. All of a sudden, you might ask her a question like, "Oh yeah, you know, you got a man or not? Or you know, what's up? Oh yeah, I got one, but it, it's okay. You know, it's complicated. That's that temptation right there. Are you are you gonna uh, give into your flesh, or are you are you gonna resist that man? You know that that's just one example. Cause look, hey, if you if you give into your flesh, now you just committed adultery. You know, or are you hey, are you gonna steal? All right, from from for, from your brother, okay. You know, are are you going to you know be a striker? Are you gonna learn how to take the low? These these are things, you know that 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 you know uh, particular things that occur. Are you gonna you know apply the wisdom that's written in the scriptures? All right, you see. Let me keep reading. This is Sirach two and two. Set thy heart all right, meaning your mind. And constantly endure. See, it said constantly endure. Endure what? Trials and tribulations that are going to hit you. And make not haste in, the, in, t in time of trouble. So you're not supposed to make haste. Deal with your affliction. Be patient. Keep praying to the Lord. And look, eventually, eventually, Yahweh Bashim al is going to give you an opening. Okay? I always say this. You know how um, you're in a department store, right? Or wherever you're at, right? One of these, you know, big buildings. Doesn't matter what it is, right? Factory, etc. You know, etc. Right? Huge, you know, condominium. You know, sky rise, high rise, right? There's always what that emergency ed uh, exit. The Lord always has an emergency exit for us, and we'll be safe and sound, man. You know. So hey, don't panic when you know things get bad. So it says here, uh. Cleave unto him. See, we got to cleave unto the Lord and depart not away. And that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. You see, eventually, you're going to be increased. <clears throat> Whether it be today, tomorrow, a year from now, at the end of this uh, this walk, so to speak, you know, you're going to get increased. Best believe. And what does it say here in verse 4? Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Take it cheerfully. See, what the Lord is doing when He's, you know, making you go through these trials and tribulations is he, he, he's, he, he's putting you through the furnace of adversity, the furnace of affliction, which we need to be put in, these, uh, uh, in that fire, all right? Because we need to be purified because we're still, you know, uh, um, we still need to be cleansed. We're still being clean to this very day. All right, you see. So it's important for us to go through these things. It's going to make us better at the end of the day. It says, "And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate, for gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity." You see, acceptable men are are, are going to be um, in the furnace of adversity. And the Lord wants you to fight. He wants you to be like our forefather Jacob, okay? Which his name was turned to Israel. And the reason why is because he wrestled that angel, okay? He kept wrestling that angel for that uh, for that blessing, okay? And we got to have that same spirit. You got to keep fighting. Wrestle and fight for your blessing. Or are you just going to give up throwing the, 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 the white towel, man? Say, I can't do it. And you see a lot of guys, they 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 get in that spirit. Like I said, things get a you know a little rough. Okay. All of a sudden, you know, like their finances are low. They lost their job. Okay. Now all of a sudden, uh, 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 uh um, their woman leaves with the kids. Next thing you know, they're um, <clears throat> getting rebuked by the you know the brotherhood, and it becomes too much for them. They're like, you know what? 
I didn't sign up for this. See, they they had they they basically got that Esau spirit. Look, I thought I was just gonna get the kingdom right away. You know, I thought we were gonna you know be out of this in a year. <laughs> That's the spirit that they're in that that that, that microwave generation. Oh, just throw, hey, just throw the uh, the popcorn in, all right? The microwave, you know, for two minutes, it'll be out and done, hot, fresh. <laughs> you know, that's the spirit they're in, and we can't be like that. Hey, we we, we got to be patient. Okay, I'll say this, you know, just as an example. Look, a home cooked meal where you had to prep everything. You know, you had to slice and dice the tomatoes, the onions, okay, and you made your own sauce. You know, you, you slow cooked your meal. All right, that's going to taste way better than, you know, buying yourself a microwave dinner. All right, buying the Salisbury steak dinner. All right, microwave dinner, okay? That that, that, that meal, you know, that, that, you got the, the, the chicken with the, you know, the gravy on there. And, the, you know, they got the spices, the sauces and all that. You know, with the with the veggies, you know, where we do, you know, sprinkle, you know, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper on there. You know, you 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 got the the salad, whatever it is, right? You know, you 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 your mashed potatoes, all that's gonna taste way better than, like I said, getting some, you know, from from the frozen uh, dinner section, man. Okay. So these things are are important what we go through, but like I said, certain guys they get offended. Let me get this scripture, and I think this might be the last one. Here we go. Straight to the point. Let's just get straight to the point. This is Matthew 11 and 6. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. See, blessed are you who, who's not offended. You got to uh, uh, remember these things are going to come to pass at some point, man. Things that, you know, that are going to make you feel uncomfortable. You're going to go through trials and tribulation. It is what it is. You're going to experience loss. It could be financial loss. It could be a, a death of a, a loved one. It could be your family leaving you. Whatever it is. You, you, you're you not having the best health anymore. That's something that I'm going through. <laughs> I don't have the best health like I used to. And I'm a brother that tries to eat healthy, you know, to the best of my ability. Try to eat my veggies, eat my fruits, all that stuff. You know, try not to eat, you know, too many fried foods, etc. You know, but hey, th things are happening. But I know it's, you know, the Lord, he's just doing what he's doing. You know, it is what it is. Now, I'm just going to keep praying. They keep trying to take my herbs, keep trying to eat healthy to the best of my ability. May the Lord, you know, take this, you know, uh, you know, these, these, uh, you know, ailments away from me. But if it doesn't happen, so be it. I'll just have to wait until, you know, we get changed into our new bodies. You know, and, and there's other things too. And I'm sure brothers and sisters are going through things, you know, but you're not a hey, don't get offended when these things hit you. All right, but I'll get this Salaki one last scripture and I'll be, I'll be uh, uh, done. This is Acts. Uh, was that fourteen and twenty two? Says here, um, Acts fourteen and twenty two, confirming the souls of the of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must that so hold on, let me read it, and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the Most High. So we got to go through a lot basically before we get into the kingdom. All right, it is what it is. There's going to be a lot of things that hit us, and are uh, the, are those things that hit us going to make us feel uncomfortable? Yes, yes. It is what it is, though. It's a part of this walk, and I'll say this: even you know, even things in this world, right? You know, you uh, you know, you look at these. Um, let's just say, like a Kobe Bryant, right? You know, you look at the uh, the Messies and trying to think, you know, the, the the Floyd Mayweathers, all right, the Canellos, all these, you know, top tier guys. They just didn't get the, you know, the, you know, the championship, you know, rings and the, you know, the trophies, you know, you know, right away. You know, they just didn't get it, you know, they didn't get that talent, right, because they were lazy. Now, they put in that work. And hey, you listen to Kobe Bryant. He 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 would be out there, you know, you know, working out before uh, people were even getting in the gym. He was already running. 
He was already, you know, hitting the weights. Going through drills. And that's why he would talk so much, you know, so much smack. Even when I say that, I'm talking about his own teammates. He would talk so much smack to them because they didn't have that same spirit. And that's why they were, you know, at a, a lower level than him. You see? And that's just one example. I was watching even Floyd Mayweather, man. Guy doesn't, you know, once in a while he may, you know, go out because, of course, there's a balance to things. But for the most part, this guy's waking up. He, he's in Florida uh, jogging at 5 in the morning with his squad, you know, with his team. Waking up at 4 in the morning to get out at 5 to go do what he's got to do. You see? Putting in all those hours. And that's what we got to do, you know, spiritually speaking. Got to constantly be reading, constantly be making videos, studying, resisting temptation, applying wisdom, etc. So we can get into the kingdom, man. All right? But that's pretty much it. But, you know, I'm going to end this lesson. Hopefully it was edifying one. I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Shemel Shai. Also, double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone and salutations to all you brothers. Shalom.